Tēnā koutou katoa he mahi tēnei ki a koutou i hui hui mai nei mai nā tōpito o te ao. Nā iwi taketake nā whanaunga tēnā koutou katoa. He uri tēnei nō waikato awa, nō tanaki maunga, e mahi ana ki a koutou, ko Leone Piha ma tōku ingo. Kia ora, my name's Leone. I'm one of the outgoing council members for NASA and I want to welcome you to this business meeting for 2022. I want to acknowledge first and foremost the many trials and tribulations that many of our communities have experienced over the past few years, not only with the pandemic, but with an ongoing search for self-determination, for justice, for equity for our people. And I also want to acknowledge the incredible strength and power that we've done together collectively as Indigenous nations for the well-being of current and future generations. As an outgoing council member, I want to thank you all for allowing me to be a part of being in service to you all in the past three years. And in particular, I want to acknowledge the various presidents of NASA that have carried much of the load, in particular, Aloha Harris, Shannon Speed, Susan Hill, Brendan Hokofitu, and the incoming president, Aileen Morton Robinson. I owe debt of gratitude to all of you for the many learnings and the many opportunities I've had to be a part of serving the NASA community. I want to wish you all well. I want to wish well-being for your communities and look forward to when we get together again in the future. Nō reira, kia koutou katoa, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Skeno swagwego, di o ndate ni gyaso, o tahione ni wagi shoutdank gan yank kiono ni wakwenzadank. I'm Susan Hill, past president of NASA Council for 21-22 and an associate professor in the Department of History and the Center for Indigenous Studies at the University of Toronto. I send you greetings of peace and good health from my home community of Six Nations of the Grand River and give thanks that we're able to gather virtually for our annual business meeting. Looking forward to seeing many of you again in person in future years when we're able to be together personally in our annual meetings. Onagihia. Hi folks, uh, this is Kevin Bright Eel here. I'm the treasurer for NASA and a council member. I'm a settler scholar who teaches at Babson College uh, on the lands of the Massachusetts people, uh, the unceded lands. Um, and I just to hear a welcome to everybody from NASA members and hopefully future members. Um, it's been a tough couple of years, um, but we're doing our best to bring everybody together. There's been wonderful regional gatherings and they'll continue. And really looking forward to not only uh, what's gonna happen in the rest of 2022, but also hopefully also 2023 when maybe hopefully we can all see each other again. I hope everybody's doing well and looking forward to seeing people in person and wishing everybody the best for the coming year. Um, be well, everybody. Buddha baby. My name is Astrid Dunkerson and I'm associate professor in sociology at Nord University in Buda in Norway, uh, where I work mainly with Sami indigenous gender and Arctic related issues. Uh, I've been in the council for two years and looking forward to my third year. Hello, Toe. My name is Valerie Bluebird Jernigan. I'm a Choctaw woman from Oklahoma, and I'm also a professor of medicine at the Oklahoma State University Center for Health Sciences, where I direct the Center for Indigenous Health Research and Policy. I am a member of the NASA Council and have served for, this will be my second year, uh, my work focuses on improving native food systems to support um, native community health. It's really wonderful to meet you. Greetings, my relatives. It's beautiful to see you all. My name is Kiara Vigil. I am an associate professor of American studies at Amherst College, and I am finishing up my second year of service on NISA Council. And I want to welcome you all to this year's annual business meeting. It's been an honor and a privilege to serve NISA over the last two years, and I look forward to my third and final year, which is going to be starting soon. Hi, my name is Karen Recolay, and I'm currently working and living in the Mississaugas of the Scugog Island First Nation Territory, which is under the Williams Treaty. I am a professor at uh, Women and Gender Studies Institute at the University of Toronto, Ontario. I have also had the pleasure this year of witnessing some incredibly thoughtful, brilliant and beautiful thoughts um, shared because I've been part of the prize committee for the best article this year. Um, 
it's been lovely working with Mesa folks. Um, I've enjoyed their company and their brilliant thoughts for the future. I look forward to hopefully seeing you all in person sometime soon. And I hope that your families and yourselves are keeping well. Thank you. Adios and Chia Nievu. Saludos a todos. Yo soy Marisa Lana Duarte, Inepo Marisa Lana Duarte Teat. Uh, I am an associate professor at the School of Social Transformation at Arizona State University and also the outgoing secretary of NASA, a role I have fulfilled with great pride and respect for all of you, my colleagues in Native American and Indigenous Studies. Um, I uh, just want to welcome you once again this year and thank all of you for attending, those of you who could, the regional events. This was really um, something new for all of us, and I am very proud to say that this council and all the members uh, who have since left and the new ones coming on are just doing a tremendous role in keeping the work of our association together in spite of the challenges through the pandemic. It really is remarkable, the, the dedication that we have, the respect that we have for each other. It's really apparent from the view I've had the honor of holding over the last three years. Tēnā koutou katoa, ko Ngāti Puki a tiwi, ko Brennan Hoka Whitu Toko Ingoa. As I've just said, my uh, people are Ngāti Pukinga, and iwi are people from the east coast of Te Ikao Maui, the North Island of Aotearoa, New Zealand. Um, and my name is Brennan Hoka Whitu, and I am the current president of NASA. So I'd firstly like to acknowledge all the indigenous peoples who we all um, are gathering on their lands or our lands um, today. Uh, the guardians and protectors of our lands. I also want to thank our um, wonderful council members who served with me this year um, for the fantastic work that they've done this year and keeping the association's heartbeat going um, during really tough times. I want to especially thank our outgoing council members who are cycling off this year. That's Sue Hill as past president, Marissa Duarte as secretary, and our council members, Liani Pihama and Luis Kakumo Huachante, thank you all for your amazing work that you've done for the association. We all really appreciate it. I also want to welcome uh, the new council members coming in. That's Cheryl Lightfoot as president, Alyssa Mount Pleasant as secretary, Je Jessica Bissett Perea and Nick Estes as new council members. I want to thank you all in advance for um, the wonderful work that you'll be doing for the association. Uh, lastly, I just want to give my utmost gratitude to the, the seven regional gatherings who were willing to commit to doing the work this year on our behalf. Um, I, by all accounts, the gatherings have been fantastic. So we are very, very grateful to you for the work that you've done on behalf of the association, but also the, the people that were able to present and the peoples that you were representing. Namahi nui nui kia koutou. Uh, that's it from me. Nā hau e whā, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou kato. Uh, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou kato. Uh, to open our 2022 NASA business meeting, I want to invite uh, our esteemed tohunga who has joined us today. I'm um, very grateful and humbled by your presence and willingness to open this meeting for us. Uh, I uh, greetings from the Kapiti Coast of the North Island of Aotearoa, New Zealand. Uh, greetings to yourselves, the uh, Native American Indigenous Studies uh, Association. Uh, this is Te Whare Makate o Te Uki Te Tonga, a traditional ritual and incantation group based here on the Kapiti Coast. And it's our privilege and our honor to be part of Brendan's <coughs> last meeting and to assist him in uh, descending from his position and another taking his place. So, mihi ane kia koutou, te la koutou katoa. Te kawa hua pirangi. E rangi e papa tenei tō, pia tenei tō, tau i rā. Parangaranga, te tiku tiku a te rangi, karangaranga, te kākaha, te penu, wā. 
Thank you for bringing, uh, beginning, uh, beginning us in this uh, way. Uh, kia ora koutou kato, ko Ngāti Pukinga te iwi, ko Ngāti Pukinga ki makatū te hapū, uh, ko Brendan Hukufutu toku ingoa. As I've just said, I'm Ngāti Pukinga, and particularly from uh, the Makatū um, area, and my name is Brendan Hukufutu. I'm a professor of Indigenous Studies at the University of Queensland, and I'm currently the president of the Native American Indigenous Studies Association, NASA. I firstly want to acknowledge uh, all the Indigenous peoples uh, whose lands that we gather on today, wherever you may be. Um, for me, it's the funeral of the Waikato Tainui peoples, so I acknowledge their continued presence as guardians of these lands. Joining me here on the screen um, are the 2021-2022 NICER Council members, past President Sue Hill, President-elect Aileen Morton-Robinson, Secretary Marissa Duart, Treasurer Kevin Brunel, third year term council members Leone Pihama and Louise Kakamo Huachante, uh, second year council members Kiara Vigil and Astri Dankudston, and first year council members Karen Ricolette and Valerie Bluebird Jernigan. Joining us also are new council members who I will announce shortly, but also NOMCOM, Clint Carroll and others um, from Abiala, the working group, uh, Kuponka, uh, Sandoval, Marcelo Montalvo, and also we have the editors of the NACE Journal, Shanina Lamawaima and Kelly McDonough. Uh, Council welcomes you all to NACE's 2022 annual business meeting. I just want to talk a little bit about the logistics of the meeting. Um, so for kind of, because it's our business meeting, we need to record it. And so this meeting will be recorded. Um, in this meeting, your channel for communication is the Q&A function. You're welcome to send a comment or question at, at any time, and we will try to answer your questions during the Q&A period. Uh, we welcome you to use the, the chat function for communication with other attendees. Again, please use the Q&A function to share comments or send questions. While attendees will not appear in the video, please be aware that anything you put on the Q&A will be available to registered participants. Um, who are in the virtual who are in the business meeting today. Finally, as a reminder to our participants, um, please keep your mic off anytime you're not speaking unless otherwise instructed. 
So I'm just going to give a brief um, president's message about the year. Um, so firstly, I want to talk about our, our finances a little bit. I know our treasurer, Kevin Brunel, will talk about this later. Um, but some of you remember that I was NASA's first treasurer and the then president and I, Robert Warrior, we set about developing guidelines for financial responsibilities in relation to our, particularly in relation to our annual gatherings, but also financial goals, um, both immediate and long-term. So, for instance, we wanted to have enough money in the bank if anything went wrong, such as a um, conference being cancelled um, and all the hotel cancellation fees, which could run into the thousands of hundreds of thousands of dollars. And of course, some of you remember this may this um, happened. Well, this was close to happening a couple of times in our history. Um, so I think this has been kind of relayed previously to the membership, but I do want to kind of suggest that we are in a very high, uh, healthy financial position and that these, these targets have been reached. Um, and I do want to kind of acknowledge the past councils that have allowed this to happen, but also the local host committees who essentially have fundraised on behalf of the association. So thank you. Uh, <clears throat> So I guess I'm leading to the second point, which is for the first time in our history, we've, we've hired uh, an administrative assistant. I know that there's been administrative assistants before, but this one is more on a, a, a less on a temporary basis and more on a permanent role. Um, and NASA is the largest association dedicated to Indigenous studies scholarship in the world, and it's really grown since um, 2006 when a small group of 80 of us gathered in Oklahoma. The last in-person NASA held in 2019, which I had the privilege of being the, the chair of the local host committee, we had close to 2,000 registrations. So it's been an exp exponential um, kind of rise in the association. But with that has been a rise on the work of council um, and particularly members of council, such as the secretary, treasurer, there's been a lot of um, roles that have increased and time has increased in it. And, you know, to be clear that these are all volunteer roles that the, the council have taken on. So it was definitely time that we, we hired a, a permanent person um, in the role. And we were lucky enough to get a, a person called Justin Hill, who's been absolutely fabulous. And um, we've, we now understand clearly why it's so important to have someone in that position. Um, lastly, I want to discuss uh, the regional gatherings that took place this year. We will, as a council, we'll go through them in a bit more detail um, coming up, but uh, I do want to kind of go through the decision to move to this form of gathering. So essentially, we knew that a large person gathering was out of question just because these things can take two, three years in the, in the planning, and we simply did, we could not um, plan with the pandemic. We couldn't plan six months ahead, let alone a year ahead. Um, secondly, the, the virtual event that happened last year was great, um, but we, we were having feedback. And I think also as a council, we were kind of um, over the virtual environment. We weren't sure it was highly conducive to what we were wanted to be as an association of course, land-based and gatherings, they were all just so important to, in terms of Indigenous events. Um, so we thought outside the, the box a bit and because of the COVID restrictions, we thought, well, these regional gatherings idea where small groups can meet largely within their uh, geographical regions was a good idea to go. And I think it's been actually a raging success and we've had feed, lots of positive feedback and actually people of saying, well, we, why don't we do this all the time? That's a, that's a discussion um, that f future council will have to have. So um, I think the next section of our meeting is we're going to have a, have a uh, PowerPoint slideshow and a number of us council members are going to um, present on the on the various, on the seven gatherings that were held. There was one gathering that, that hasn't been held yet, um, but we can talk about that later. So I might, Marissa, if we can have the PowerPoint up, and I do believe that you are 
at first as well. Okay. So um, there were a number of gatherings. Uh, the first one that I'm going to speak about is Red Folinai, which was organized. I'd like to honor the work of Dr. Cindy Garcia Weant, Assistant Professor of Critical Ethnic Studies at Kalamazoo College, in organizing this event. This particular event, all of them, but this one really uh, spoke to me because it represents the community centered, place based work that we really strive to uplift and uphold in NASA. Oh, so, and we can see the evidence of the many years, the many visits um, with and relationships that Dr. Garcia has built with relatives, collectives, social movements, colleagues, educators in Nayarit and throughout the indigenous world that made it possible. So this event occurred on 20, February 21st at the UNAM, the Universidad Autónoma de Nayarit, with the representatives of four communities, Ata, Mexica, Nayeri, and Wirarica, community-based programs, nonprofits, and institutions, and it was live streamed. Let's see here. To, okay. Um, they had an opening chemo, keynote by Dr. Jose Luis Moctezuma Samarón, and they also had a story time with Dr. Felipe Rivera, a, wish, a Wirarica speaker and a story, storyteller. Um, they also invited uh, multi-generational involvement. They had children who presented and listened to a short story in Wirarica with part of the Taniyuki project. In addition to community-centered roundtables that were about experiences of language revitalization through Nayarit, they also had a presentation on indigenous women's perspective of language use in public social movements. And they also had partnerships where they learned from language nests created by Rapa Nui native speakers and activists, Samuel Atan Tuki and Nicole Tuki Rengifo, um, as well as UCLA doctoral student Cesar Barreras, who is Yaki and Cristian Ramirez, in which they shared a panel about indigenous languages and literatures. And finally, I would say that this, you know, the impact all the way from children learning to making connections with Oceania and different parts of Mexico and the borderlands, you know, was that this event was very integral to planning the agenda for the um, decade celebration of international indigenous languages. And the, the folks who attended this particular event used the space to commit to um, four goals. So one, to up open more spaces for the use of indigenous languages through workshops, classes, and schools. Second, to offer workshops for native speakers to develop their pedagogical strategies, to find ways to implement language nests in Tepic, and also to bring more heightened public awareness to the needs of um, language revitalization in Nayarit. And so this was just a phenomenal presentation um, a series of events, and you can go to their website and to the Facebook event to participate and take a look at some of these, which are still available online. And I will turn the presentation over to Luis. Thank you, uh, dear Marisa. Um, I would like to, uh, my name is Luis Carcamo Huachante, by the way, a member of the, an, 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 an outgoing member of the NASA Council. Um, I would like to talk about the Aviala Regional Gatherings. Uh, which took place uh, as virtual meetings on March 21st and 22nd, as well as on April 14th uh, of this year. These uh, three gatherings uh, took place during the spring and fall equinox, which was a very important moment uh, for, uh, for uh, the happening of this uh, virtual gathering. The first gathering brought together 1,808 attendees. The second gathering was able to uh, bring together 79 attendees. And the third gathering was also successful in having an attendance of 41 people. With 20 speakers as part of the six sessions uh, that were part of these uh, virtual meetings. In this sense, uh, it was a really, really a vibrant, uh, intellectually stimulating uh, uh, event. Uh, as you see here uh, in the program of this Aviala Regional Gatherings, uh, you see here that uh, important topics for uh, the life of uh, indigenous peoples 
and lands uh, in, in, in Avellala and beyond were part of the conversation. Uh, the Avellala regional gatherings discuss uh, issues such, such as uh, North-South uh, indigenous relations and solidarities, uh, water and land politics, uh, as well as uh, uh, they were able to feature some artists who uh, perform uh, native arts from Avialala for these occasions. I would like to congratulate the whole collective of the Avialala Working Group for this wonderful endeavor, especially my congratulations to the outstanding leadership of the two uh, outgoing co-coordinators of the Avialala work, Working Group, Cueponca Chochil Moreno Sandoval from California State University Stanislaus and Marcelo Garzo Montalvo from California State University San Marcos. A key component of their leadership in my view uh, for uh, in, the, uh, in organizing these uh, regional gatherings was the ability of both Cueponca Chochil and Marcelo to get involved in, in the process uh, several uh, former leaders of the Avellala uh, Working Group, as well as members of the, the whole working group. So I think an important uh, uh, outcome of their leadership uh, was this kind of uh, way to forge uh, collectivity, collaboration, and conversation among uh, uh, members of the Avellala Working Group and members of the NASA Association. Congratulations to you all. Thank you. I believe it's handed to me to talk about the, the land new regional gathering, which took place um, this year, April 22nd to 25th. It was hosted by the Centre for International Indigenous, International Indigenous Affairs at the National Duonghua University, which is in Hualien, Taiwan. Um, so it was actually Jolene Hashish and Dana Powell, who you probably recognize their names. Jolene has certainly seen, uh, served on NASA Council in the past, and D Dana has attended um, the NASA conferences several times. Um, so they were co hosts with the Ministry of Science and Technology, and um, they've held a wonderful event by all by all accounts. So uh, they had 30 people register, including faculty, students, and community-based community Indigenous artists. Um, their graduate students came from a number of disciplines. Um, their participants included many community members from the Tao, Paiwan, Penka, Bunan, Surya, Indigenous peoples in Taiwan. And they also got quite a lot of media coverage from the Taiwan Indi uh, Indigenous television station. I just want to kind of briefly talk about their, their multi-day workshop. Um, they had, it sounds like a wonderful event. They did tours all around the island, ethnobotanical tours, historical tours and public lectures with knowledge keepers. Um, so yes, and they also had intensive discussion with novelists and literary uh, scholars. Um, they had several key presenters. Um, they had, for instance, six local Tao leaders um, who were instrumental in, in reshaping national debates on nuclear waste. So uh, the Lanyu and Tao people are, are known as the host to the low level nuclear waste storage and also in relation to tourism waste management. So this sounds like a, a gathering that um, was very rich and full of resistance in terms of um, nuclear waste and tourism and waste management. So on behalf of the association, I'd like to thank um, the organizers for and all the participants in the land new regional gathering. Kia ora. I'm also um, talking about Tachinta. I, I know Tachinta a little bit from my time at um, the University of Alberta, and I've, I've flown up there, and it's certainly a wonderful place. So they actually had three events. Um, one was an uh, in-person gathering in Whitehorse, I believe, and then they had a virtual event, 
And then they also are, are about to have another in-person event. Um, so yes, they've had 128 registrants and 100 attendees over the three days, uh, including 40 Indigenous youth, Indigenous youth, academics, artists, and creatives. And actually the local youth led a mural painting um, that was gifted to the Ross River Dinner Council um, in the Yukon. Just go back one, Melissa, if that's okay. So in the Whitehorse um, gathering, you will recognize many of these names, Sarah Hunt, Glenn Coulter, Dr. Leanne uh, Bettersmoke Simpson, Crystal Fraser, they've all contributed um, to this event. Sounds like a wonderful event for those that were able to go. Um, but also they had lots of um, elders represented throughout the, the three days. Oh, and also um, Angelique Bernard, Commissioner of the Yukon, attended all three days, and the Honourable Van, Dan Van Dahl, Minister of Northern Affairs, attended the opening as well. So some political representation there for Mesa. Kia ora, Marissa. Uh, yeah, so the virtual gathering event had 66 pre presenters over 21 panels. Um, it looks like a pretty standard affair with round tables, book panels, uh, short films and performances. Uh, the presentations had six, seven graduate students, 21 land-based youth elders, three elders, uh, leaders, three elders, and 13 artists. Uh, the, the Yellow Knife Gathering that's about to come and will include 12 panels, 20 presenters, academics, artists, and also it's about to take place June 23rd to 25th. Again, on behalf of NASA Council and our membership, I want to thank Dechinta for um, taking this uh, regional gathering idea and running with it and actually hosting three events. Uh, extremely grateful to you all. Thank you. Okay. Um, you're right, everyone. Uh, my name is Aileen Morton Robinson, and I'm uh, current president elect, but uh, I'm also professor of Indigenous Studies at UQ. Uh, we held our regional gathering between the 29th and 31st of May. Um, it was opened by the Vice-Chancellor um, of the University of Queensland, Professor um, Deb Terry, and also uh, Brendan opened as the president of NASA, which was a wonderful thing for everyone that um, he was actually about to do that. Uh, registrations for our event, uh, we had some dropouts, but... There were 99 people that were in person and we had 81 participants um, that, were, that were present virtually. Uh, countries represented were Australia, USA, Hawaii, New Zealand, French Polynesia and Canada. So it was, um, it was well represented in terms of the facility. Um, the number of uh, sessions and papers, we, 67 papers were presented and that was uh, quite a lot of those were um, graduate students, which was great to see. The, uh, the organising committee was led by Professor Tracy Bunder. And um, in particular, I'd like to thank her for her work to NASA and the Pro Vice Chancellor uh, Indigenous at UQ, uh, Professor Bronwyn Fredericks. Um, we were able basically to pull together this huge um, three day event uh, because her office funded. Um, just resourced and and uh, um, to bring it together, and for that, um, I think Nate Naser is uh, very grateful. To the end. Thank you. So on May 30th to May 31st, the Anishinaabe Kandasuan Institute, or Aki AKI, at Lakehead University hosted Telling Our Own Stories, Indigenous Self-Determination in Data and Research as a virtual NASA regional gathering. There were 71 guests for this virtual event, as well as 30 or 35 folks who weathered the intensity of our storms to gather. 
We would like to congratulate Dr. Lana Ray as the chair of the conference and all of your accomplices or comrades in bringing this conference to be in the world. How beautiful to gather in a series of kitchen table talks as beautiful offerings and invitations to be in relation. We know how much effort and love this takes and we acknowledge its ripples throughout Turtle Island in contributing to a radically stunning constellation of research and inquiry. This gathering fulcrum was to collaborate on thinking through and amplifying together Indigenous data and research sovereignty as a practice of Indigenous self-determination. Through repair and reclamation, this gathering brought wonderful, inspiring, brilliant folks together to amplify that Indigenous folks are data stewards and we can tell our own stories steeped in our intellectual traditions that advance decolonial futures. One of the many special moments was Kathy Absalon's second edition of Kendasawin, How We Come to Know Indigenous Research Methodologies. Some of the offerings included the sharing of work related to decolonial autoethnographies, Indigenous research, thinking alongside archives, Indigenous dance, Machif dreams, and land-based learning. We hold up this work and look forward to hearing more about strategies of resistance and are thankful for the sharing of knowledges as they advance the futures of Indigenous land and livingness. Hi, uh, my name is Astrid Donkitschen and I'm Associate Professor in Sociology at Norwood University. And I was also the coordinator of the Sami Regional Gathering uh, last week on June 8th and uh, June 8th, 10th in Bode in Norway. Um, we chose to have a small gathering. Uh, we had one day that was in person uh, where we also had uh, opening for people to follow the gathering uh, online on Zoom. And we had one day of work, virtual presentations. Um, I think we were, I didn't really count how many people that were online. I think we were maybe, uh, well, we had maybe 30 people in total or uh, a little bit more, but it was, I didn't really count, but I think that we, had, we were a quite small group, but I think that it was, we had time to have some really good and interesting conversations and dialogues. And we had some really interesting presentations as well. Uh, we had some presentations of people that had been to NASA many times before. And we also had some new people. Uh, we had presenters both from Norway and Sweden and Finland uh, and also from the US. So it was quite a um, um, a lot of different and interesting presentations that uh, I think was uh, good, uh, made it a good uh, experience for everyone that participated. And we also had some, some uh, ranger herders that participated in some of the dialogues in relation to, to the presentations and also screened some uh, movies during the events. I think that it was a nice and small event where we had uh, time to get to know each other and had some really good dialogues during the seminar. So, yeah. Uh, kia ora, so again, on behalf of council, I'd just like to thank the regional gatherings, the local host committees in particular for being willing to take on that work. Um, I was lucky enough to attend the U University of Queensland uh, event in Brisbane, I think it was two weeks ago now, and it was such a vibrant event, um, it was so good to get back into person and to eat food with people and to connect again, so I'm sure all the other events were like that, um, a real opportunity for us to, to grow as an association, so um, on behalf of Council, our deepest gratitude to you all for taking on that work. So now, now we move into the section of the, the meeting where we um, say goodbye to council members who are leaving us and welcome new council members coming on to council. Um, so the, the four council members that are leaving us have gone through a time which is possibly one of the most difficult in the association's history. Uh, it's the first time that we've actually had to council, uh, cancel a conference. 
It's the first time we've gone through a pandemic. Um, it's the first time we've held a virtual conference, which was a lot of work um, for council and particularly Sue. And also it's the first time that we've um, held this idea of um, multiple regional gatherings. So we've gone through a lot of this council um, and I'd like to pay my thanks to them. Um, so Sue, um, thank you very much. You led the, the virtual conference last year and did such a fantastic job. Uh, Marissa, I want to pay particular homage to you for your outstanding work in your three years as secretary. Marissa, we've just hired Dustin this year and we've realized how much Marissa has been doing for the association um, as a volunteer. And in all these kind of associations, there's there's positions and then there's other positions and some of the, the kind of workload dis distribution is not fair. Um, but Marissa has, uh, with a big heart, taken on a lot of that work. So I want to pay homage to Marissa. To our two outgoing members of council, Luis and Leone, um, thank you very much. Again, both of you um, have stood up in, in these times and done a lot of work on, the, on behalf of the association, but also intellectual work. You two in particular have, um, when we've needed, you've brought your intellectualism to the council and allowed us that kind of space to think about things and, and grow as an association. So I thank you um, both very much. Um, to all four of you, thank you again. Um, I, at this time, we would usually do gifts for the outgoing council members. Um, but rest assured, we did. I we did purchase gifts for the for the outgoing members, and they hopefully will receive them if the New Zealand Post system and the US Post system cooperates. But we'll see about that. I know that two of them have got gifts already, so that that gives me heart. Um, so it's hard to see our members go, but it's also a time of renewal um, and coming in for a new council is Jessica Bassett Perea and Nick Estes as council members. And also Alyssa Mount Pleasant as Secretary and Cheryl Lightfoot as President of Elect. So many of you will know these, these people from NICER conferences in the past, um, and you might recall that Alyssa has been quite heavily involved in the association as both, uh, she serves on council, but also has co chaired the, the local host committee at the Mohegan Sun event um, some time ago. So welcome Cheryl, Alyssa, Nick and Jessica, and I thank you in advance for all the work that you're going to do for the association. Um, so now it's the time to hand to our treasurer, Kevin Brunel, who's going to give this year's treasurer's report. Kia ora, Kevin. Am I ready to share, Marissa? Uh, good evening, everybody, uh, or good day. I know it's different times. Uh, it's really an honor to present um, the Treasurer's Report um, here in uh, June 2022. Um, I want to echo um, something that Brendan said earlier about the long history of the organization. Um, as you can see here, I took over in July 2021 uh, from Shanina Lomawama, um, who'd been chair the last three years. And you can see in the documentation of the history of this organization, the incredible amount of work that's gone on, that's gone on since its founding. Um, from, from the beginning, as, as Brennan said, with Robert and, as president and Brendan as treasurer onwards up to where it is now. And I think the organization financially is in really great shape. Um, I want to particularly thank Chanina for all the work she's done the last three years and all the help she provided me in training me um, into this position. Um, and uh, I have so much appreciation. And as the phrase goes, you stand on the shoulders of giants. And I feel as I can see what's going on, gone on this organization financially, you can see all the work, the great work that's been done over these years. Um, I won't take too long. I'll just, as I say, give here a snapshot of our 2021 balances, uh, business accomplished in 2021, and also goals and next steps. And then we'll have a QA and a if anybody has any questions for more specifics. Um, let's get to the cash. Okay. Um, so you hear, see here um, a three-year um, sense of where we are, the end of the um, calendar year of 2019, 2020, and 2021. And you can see we've gone from 707,000 
2019 to 810,000 um, this past December 31st. So um, the organization is in strong financial health. As Brendan said, we have to have a certain amount of, of funds uh, secured for um, rainy days. And the last few years, it's been pouring rain. So we've been in a good position to able, be able to deal with crises, to be able to pivot and be flexible. Um, a couple of things to note here. Um, previous councils decided for good reasons to end any relationship to Wells Fargo um, and to put appropriately a big zero behind, beside their name. So those funds have been removed by the previous council, by Janine and the, pre and the previous executive council. And most of that money, that money went into either the savings account at First National Bank, that's what FNB stands for, or the checking account. So you see that the rise in the amount of money in savings, and you do see an increase in checking. Um, part of the increase for um, NASA over the past year is from 2020 to 2021, is an increase in revenue that came from the University of Minnesota Press from memberships. Uh, previous um, leaders of this organization created a, a fantastic deal with the University of Minnesota Press for the journal and for memberships. We, we, NASA does very well with this. We didn't have as many expenses this year because not having a conference in person in terms of travel and other things going on. So it was, it was better on the revenue side and we're well positioned going forward um, in terms of what we wanna do in the next few years. So um, this is a picture that I think is continue, gonna continue to go up. I would expect, um, given the popularity of NASA and hopefully with um, the movement towards return of conferences and continuing to uh, increase membership. So we're in good stead by my accounts and um, that's how I see it. Um, business accomplished in 2021. Um, this, the first one was accomplished by Janina is to get the taxes submitted and filed and through and we're okay with the tax people. Um, so that's done and we're in compliance with everything we, we need to. Uh, the recent taxes for 2021 that, that were done a few was done a month ago. So we're in good shape in terms of taxes. A couple changes we made. Um, we put post jobs on the um, job ads on the NASA site. If you're a member of NASA, this is another reason to be a member. Anybody out there, um, you get to post ads for free. If you're not, um, we've changed the price from $100 for 30 days to $250 for a flat fee. A lot of the people paying us are these job search businesses. Um, sometimes we hear from the same person like 10 times over or from university. So this is an, an opportunity uh, to increase some revenue that we can move and direct in places to support research gatherings and, and so on. So one of the changes we've made also to continue to provide support for the NASA Journal, um, incredibly important for us. Um, so that businesses continue to be accomplished and moving forward. Um, and as Brendan said, we've hired a great administrative assistant, Justin Hill, which has been a very important step in terms of as the organization gets bigger to be able to have this support that goes beyond the great work done by volunteers. And then we moved uh, the NASA accounting process and books to online digital platforms, such as QuickBooks, uh, where we uh, communicate with the accountants for taxes, invoices I will do for um, such things as ads and payments we make and Augusto, which is a platform for payroll. Part of the complexity of payroll is you've got to make sure that you meet all the regulations of the state um, in which the employee lives. And so that is arranges, so it's all done very, very seamlessly now that it's been approved by, in this case, the state of Arizona, so that NASA is all compliant. So that's part of the business accomplished in the last year. And then goals and next steps going forward to continue to support the regional gatherings, um, as we just saw, they've been amazing. And in some cases, there's been some need for a bit of financial support to just make sure that these go as well as they have been and continue to do so. So to make sure this process goes right through to the end, to plan for any 2023 conference activities or any other priorities. So to make sure that we're in good shape for that. Um, and then one particular thing is to seek out um, a second native run bank, present bank, first national bank is so but also to allocate probably about $250,000 from FNB to another bank. Um, Janina has already done the groundwork of looking up a number of banks and part of my summer project, I guess, uh, my research project is to search for two or three banks that I could then recommend to the council. Um, we're gonna look to do that for a couple of reasons. One is to not be reliant on one bank in terms of FDIC limits. Not that I'm expecting a crash in the bank system, but this is, you know, this is uh, the way the world works sometimes, we know. Um, and to make sure that, the, that we have sort of things 
distributed well um, in terms of allocating um, our resources, and also to find a bank that allows for a little more flexibility, although FNB is great, but especially with such things as non-US based payments that can sometimes get a little difficult. So that's something that hopefully by this time next year, I can report we've made a decision and a move on that. And finally, um, to just to maintain Mesa finances in a healthy state in compliance with 501c3 requirements to maintain organizational flexibility in the short and the long term. So that's the overview. And of course, in q and I'm happy to take any other questions you may have. Uh, kia ora, Kevin, and thank you. Uh, so Kevin's come in this year as treasurer taking over from Shanina. And uh, I know that he's had a lot of support from Shanina, but he's also taken the association in, in other directions and also growing the association with hiring Justin, for instance, which is, sounds easy, but it's not with um, salary laws and tax laws and the rest of it. So thank you very much, Kevin, for all your work that you've done for the association. Uh, speaking of Shanina, I'd, I'd now like to hand to Shanina and Kelly, who are the co-editors of the NACE Journal. Kia ora kōrua. Shanina, you have the PowerPoint? Yeah, I'll share screen. Kelly, you want to get us started? Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Kelly McDonough. I am the very lucky co-editor of the NICE Journal with Janina, and she's running the PowerPoint because I seem to have had trouble lately. Um, we wanted to start by offering uh, abundant gratitude to the editorial board, the peer reviewers, the book reviewers, and those, especially those who submit to the journal. And we want to offer a heartfelt thanks to our graduate student editorial managers, Montserrat Mariaga Caro and Jessica Sanchez Flores. We're also grateful for the funding uh, provided by the Dean of the College of Liberal Arts at the University of Texas at Austin, an editorial stipend from the University of Minnesota Press, membership dues, NISA Council, and royalty payments. We want to remind everyone that we only receive royalty payments when journal articles are accessed through Project Muse or a similar library database. Um, this means that if you use articles from the journal for your teaching, and we sure hope you do, um, please do not share PDF files with your students. Instead, ask them to access the articles through their library portal. Every click matters. Um, in terms of editorial board news, uh, we would like to recognize and thank outgoing members of the editorial board, Daniel Heath Justice and Renee Watchman. Um, we have asked Jennifer Deasy, Eve Tuck, and John Troutman to serve another term on the editorial board, and they've agreed. We're very happy about that. Uh, hopefully you've seen a call for editorial board members that was sent out in the last week of May. The deadline is July 1st, 2022, or until board members are named. And then there's also been a call for editors that is circulating. That's also got the deadline of July 1st, 2022, or until the editor or editors are named. Janina and I are uh, moving into our fourth and final year as editors. Um, recent issues since last year's business meeting, we've published two volumes. We uh, published 8.2, which had five scholarly articles by Carrie Chu, Ben Lokash, John Hins Joshua Hinson, Katrina Phillips, Meredith Jen, and Jean Dennison, Kate Renard, and Michael Taylor. And we published 36 reviews in that issue. 9.1, we had four scholarly articles by Robin Gray, Jeffrey Anselus, and Ashley Garanto Morford. Brooke Daniel Lillehaugen and Sochi Flores Marcial and Karen Stote. And with that issue, we um, published 35 reviews. So we're getting ready to close 10.1 in September. That issue will appear in spring of 2023. At this point, we have two scholarly articles, one notes from the field piece and 41 reviews. We anticipate adding at least two more articles. So something exciting that we did um, this year is the uh, NICE Journal Writing and Mentoring Fellowship. This was 
the brainchild of our fabulous editorial board. Um, so our, in our inaugural year, the fellowship committee awarded six fellowships to eight fellows. One of the projects included three co-authors. The interdisciplinary uh, areas of study include anthropology, ethnic studies, history, indigenous studies, language, sociology, and social policy. Mentors, highly regarded senior scholars in indigenous studies were identified by a subcommittee of five editorial board members and the co-editors. And we are especially grateful for their enthusiastic willingness to participate in this important endeavor aimed at supporting early career Indigenous studies scholars. A call for the 2022-2023 fellows will go out in hopefully this month in June. And now I'll turn it over to Janina. Thank you, Kelly. Um, so we have uh, some information on membership. Um, and of course, members of NISA uh, are subs also subscribing to the journal in addition to their other uh, membership benefits, such as being able to vote in elections. Um, for 2021, we had almost, just almost 1,000 total members, 999 uh, from 26 different countries. Of that number, 595 were new members and 404 were renewing members. Um, the categories of membership and subscription have been tweaked a little bit over the years in terms of what we call the levels. Um, the amount charged hasn't changed actually in quite a long time. But you can see here the breakdown um, of percentage and real numbers of people in each of the categories and has, as has been true for quite some time, um, the demographic of the membership uh, tends to trend young. So out of almost 1,000, 269 answered yes to the question, are you a grad student? Um, and a little over half, 526 answered yes to are you indigenous? Um, and people also then provide uh, individual uh, identification information. Uh, for 2022, the membership, uh, as of about two weeks ago when I checked, was 586 members. And uh, this, this number has always dropped in the beginning of the year, despite our repeated reminders to people to, oh, please stay subscribed to the journal. Um, and historically has always gone up. Um, the registration and membership numbers go up right before the uh, in-person meeting. But given um, what COVID has wrought in the world and, and the changes in our meeting schedules, um, it's possible that the total membership numbers might stay a little lower. Um, hard, to, very difficult to predict actually. Um, here you can see a, a little overview of the publication uh, record that Kelly mentioned a bit ago. Um, issues, the two issues in 2019, uh, 2020, uh, 2019, I should say, is the first year that um, Kelly and I moved into the um, office of editors of the journal, um, and 2021 and 2022. And if you track the total number of reviews, you'll see that the review numbers are really, really going up. Um, and we offer many, many thanks to the NISA membership and others who have been so willing to contribute reviews. Um, they're actually at this point possibly threatening to swamp the hard copy uh, version of the journal. So we're actually in conversations with the press and this is a conversation that no doubt will be carried forward by uh, whomever the next editorial team might be to look at the possibilities of, of putting some or all of those review publications online. This slide um, shows the kind of the trajectory of um, manuscripts uh, for <clears throat> the last three years and the first half of 2022. So in the first column, you can see the number of manuscripts received that have come into us, uh, the number of manuscripts retired. Um, now that might be a desk decline, it might be a decline after peer review, it might be an author withdrawing a manuscript, it might be people who are, who are invited to revise and resubmit for various reasons decide not to do that. Um, 
the number of manuscripts accepted and where you see in 2020 uh, plus 15, these are the 15 short essays that were invited for the intervention uh, review of the really remarkable Land Grab Universities project. And then you see also in the last column, the number of manuscripts still in the review process. Um, and what that all adds up to is um, actually an acceptance rate at this point in time uh, that's uh, extremely competitive. Um, and this is uh, partly uh, due to the fact that we publish two issues a year. There are, of course, journals that publish three to four. Uh, but the two issues, two issues per year seems to be uh, a very comfortable level for us right now in terms of being able to get an, an issue together ahead of those due dates when they're due to the press um, and having adequate manuscripts in the pipeline going forward. We've kept track, um, I should say our editorial team managing editors have kept track of uh, the self-reported disciplines of the authors published um, since the inception of the journal. You can see that history is still in the lead, <laughs> uh, followed uh, then by English and political science. Uh, I, you know, we figure this is partly due because people read nice, those people who work in history see more articles published that they, that resonate with them and they think, oh, this is a journal that I can publish in. And we certainly want to encourage that, but we also want to direct people's attention to the growing list of other disciplinary and interdisciplinary areas. And of course, almost all of these are people who work in, identify as scholars in indigenous studies, but when they self-report disciplines, it's also, it's, I should say it's often the disciplinary home where their jobs might be. Um, and those are not always indigenous studies or native studies positions. So we want to strongly, strongly, strongly encourage as always uh, our membership uh, that works in you know, this wide diversity of fields to please consider NICE as a potential home for publication. And we're very excited to, to have some manuscripts in the pipeline right now that are very, very promising um, that really break ground in some of these new areas. And just to be specific about the last two issues published in 2021, here you can see um, the interdisciplinary homes, uh, history and political science as always, but also education, language revitalization. We have some really wonderful manuscripts in that field. Sociology, women and gender studies and tourism studies, and then reviews published, accepted and in process. And, um, Kelly and I just want to thank Council and thank NISA membership for your support of the journal. Um, we have found our work with the journal to be just uh, extraordinarily rewarding and uh, very, very enjoyable. And many, many thanks, sincere thanks to all our reviewers, both reviews of books, museum exhibits, films, and so on, but particularly to our peer reviewers. Um, as we have commented many times, the level of generous, rigorous, constructive, humane, <laughs> and kind reviewing um, that we find when we solicit reviews from people in NISA, I mean, it's truly remarkable. And we, we think uh, it, it deserves great thanks as it reflects the values and the mission of the organization. So Mado, thank you to all of you out there who have done uh, and continue to do reviews for us. And I will stop sharing screen. Yes, thank you, Shanina and Kelly, and to all those involved with the, the journal. It's such an important um, output for us as Indigenous Studies scholars to, to have this journal. And I know it's been financially rocky times for many universities making cutbacks and whatnot. So, to both of you, to the editors, thank you so much for um, for your intellectual work and for your for your hands-on work with the journal as well. So now it's time in the agenda to turn to our non-com team. Um, so we'll turn to Clint Carroll, uh, who's going to give the report of the nominations committee. But before we do that, I'd like to extend our, our council's thanks to the outgoing members of NOMCOM, Doug Keel and Ashley Glassburn. 
but I'd also like to thank our incoming members, um, He Lee Hobart and Teresa Montoya, who will be joining um, continuing members Lani Tevez, Kucha Rising Baldi, Lourdes Alberto, and of course Clint. Um, I'll hand it over to you, Clint. Hello, thank you, Brendan. Hello, everyone. On behalf of NAMCOM, uh, we want to thank all who participated in the NASA elections this year. Uh, thanks especially to all those who agreed to run and submitted their very thoughtful and inspiring candidate statements. Uh, this process is vital to the health of our association, and we very much appreciate your time and dedication to serving NASA. We're extremely proud of the slate of candidates we were able to produce, and as uh, Brendan has uh, announced, uh, we want to welcome and congratulate uh, all the new NASA leadership. Um, for this year's election, I want to say a couple of uh, things about voter turnout, uh, just uh, for your information and comparing that to uh, past years. So we included members dating from 2019 to 2022 to determine our eligible elector list this year. Um, we had 429 of 1,542 eligible NASA electors submit a ballot. So that's about 27.8%. For the runoff election, which was a new thing for us uh, this year, but for the runoff election for council, voter turnout was about 26%. Uh, so this is notably higher voter participation than last year's election. Uh, we had a turnout last year of 16.4%. Uh, and just as a point of comparison, in past years, we've seen as high as 30.3%, uh, and that was in 2020, and that was due to a post-Aotearoa uh, increase in membership, but generally on average with voter turnout hovering around 20%. So um, uh, we, did, uh, we, we were heartened uh, by the turnout this year. Um, as a still relatively young or organization, we rely on all our members to take an active role in the elections process. And this includes uh, nominating colleagues who you think would make strong candidates for NASA leadership. Uh, we wanna encourage all NASA members to be thinking ahead about possible nominations, uh, including self-nominations and re-nominations uh, for our next ballot, which believe it or not, uh, will be coming up soon. Uh, this year we received 17 total nominations, which were as follows. We had eight from the general NASA membership, uh, eight from current members of NASA council, and one self-nomination. And that's up uh, three from last year's 14 nominations. And so we always encourage you to check with uh, those who, you're, who you want to nominate to make sure they're willing to run. And certainly if it's a self-nomination, uh, I encourage you to check with yourself before you put your name forward. Um, let's see, lastly, or in closing, we were heartened to see the increased turnout, as I said, from last year's uh, lower numbers. Uh, and with all of your help, we're looking forward to building another robust and representative ballot of new potential leaders for our organization. And that about does it for me. So thank you all. Well done. Thank you, Clint, and thank you, Nomcom, for all your wonderful work. You certainly did put together a wonderful slate this year. So I know it's a lot of work to, to encourage people to um, run for leadership. So we really appreciate all the work that you've done. Uh, it's now time to turn to the Abiella Working Group, um, who's also doing fantastic work on behalf of the association. So Kweponka and Marcelo, um, the floor is yours. Kia ora. Uh, kia ora. Tlaskamati Piali, everybody, and thank you for having us today. I'm tuning in from Northern Valley Yokuts Ancestral Territories. Uh, I am Cueponca, Kashkan, Chicanex, and Iscaloteca, and it is my honor to serve with Marcelo as the outgoing co coordinator and longtime supporter of Abia Yala Working Group. I'll put in the chat here the um, the link to our gathering uh, this year, which was uh, shared by Luis earlier. Thank you. Uh, my name is Marcelo Garza Montalvo. I'm one of the co-coordinators uh, with Kweponka Xochitl of the Abiyala Working Group. 
And I just want to echo that it's been an honor to serve in this capacity this year, uh, working with Kripon Kashochi and uh, many different generations of coordinators and our um, folks on council who have supported us tremendously. Uh, it's an important project of making sure that this dialogue of North and South in the so-called Americas and Abya Yala um, is, an, is, is an integral part of uh, global Native American and Indigenous studies conversation. Um, so we just want to start by giving thanks to all past, present, and future coordinators and members of the Abya Yala Working Group uh, who have created and sustained this space within NESA and beyond. When we first began to work together, it was important to nurture you know, three aspects of the work, beginning with the relationality with the former Abya Yala uh, coordinators uh, to continue the work that they had done over the years and imagine uh, some of the work that this direction was going in uh, with this uh, new leadership. And uh, we also thought about it being important to offer a visual representation of the work that we imagined together as we had these long conversations. So we worked with one of my students at Stanislaus State, who is an artist and a coordinator of indigenous students in activism to create this image uh, that would inspire the place and the concept of Abya Yala from an anti-colonial, decolonial perspective. And here's what we ended with. Um, of course, it's always open to the dynamic shifts of the body as they see fit over the years. And um, our intention here is to just share a little bit from our perspective as the co coordinators of the regional gatherings, um, some details uh, to add to um, the generous presentation from Luis to describe the regional gathering we did, which was one of our main focuses of the work. Um, we were able to host uh, three days of virtual regional gatherings, um, particularly bringing together indigenous voices from North and South, uh, rooted in hemispheric dialogue, relationality, and community across the so-called Americas. We gathered virtually in the Zumiverso, creating a temporary intercultural indigenous territory in cyberspace, sharing stories of sustaining indigenous liveliness in Abya Yala or fomentando el buen vivir in Abya Yala. Uh, we opened these dialogues as we welcomed the spring equinox in the north and the turn towards the fall equinox in the south, as Luis mentioned, uh, on Monday, March 22nd and the uh, 21st and 22nd. And we closed these on April 14th in partnership with Tona uh, Tierra Nahuacali. Um, so we're just gonna provide a, a few more details um, that we wanted to share as part of our report back for these events. And we um, did provide that link in the chat for anyone who'd like to learn more about the details of what these gatherings entailed and more details on who uh, was part of these conversations. And videos of each of these platicas and events um, are available on that page. They're hyperlinked. Uh, and we just want to give thanks, especially here also to um, Marisa Duarte and to Justin Hill, who were uh, indispensable for us to be able to build that website and have that um, be on the, the larger NASA website. So as Luis, Luis mentioned earlier, in terms of our gathering, uh, it was important for us to, to start off with uh, Sue's voice. And Sue is a uh, dule uh, from the region of Panama, uh, the place that joins both of the um, uh, parts of the hemisphere together. And for us to, to really gather and say, well, what, what kind of purpose do we have uh, in hosting these gatherings online? What are some of the issues that, that we can focus on that are across the board important for both sides of the hemisphere? And we thought about solidarity work. We thought about honoring the times uh, with the equinoxes. And we also thought about art and music, and we thought about connecting together. Uh, another uh, issue that we wanted to bring to light was um, relational accountability to the waters, to the watersheds that we lived near. <clears throat> so we created this uh, day one with uh, three different uh, sessions and invited people from the north and the south and the central area to come together and to connect. Uh, for me, what was um, most moving to me was connecting to a Mapuche elder uh, who's a poet and educator who uh, really helped us uh, understand uh, our uh, relational accountability and relationships to the waters. 
and just some other um, pieces to share from day two, uh, which was really rooted in Plactica Numero Dos, which was rematriating land and water, a conversation that was uh, moderated by our relative here, Kwekon uh, which was a conversation with um, Two-Spirit Warrior Queen, Candy Brings Plenty, uh, and our queer mestiza uh, Bolivian relative, Ines Izquierda, uh, who works in conversation with the Sagorite Land Trust, who's part of the uh, Indigenous Women Urban-led um, uh, land trust in the San Francisco Bay Area. And that was really focusing on returning indigenous uh, lands to indigenous hands and the work that that entails uh, in across the hemisphere and the work that's um, been able to be done. And in particular, uh, thinking from uh, the role of our two spirit and or queer and um, non-binary relatives who have taken uh, leadership in that work. And we just want to also, also share about the third uh, platica. And also just, if you notice, we, we really organized this gathering uh, with community in mind. And um, instead of maybe, uh, in, or maybe in, in place of a more uh, straightforward conventional paper presentations, we really uh, structured these as platicas. So they were short presentations that then created space for community dialogue. And the, the closing was really, um, a powerful place for every all attendees were given palabra, were given the opportunity to share. Um, and we have some of those testimonials to share with you, but that was a really powerful moment uh, in the Zoom world. Sometimes we don't get enough of that um, community dialogue. And that was really grounded in um, our relative Shannon Speed, who's one of the original folks who helped uh, along with uh, Luis Carcamoe Chante and many others uh, who helped really create and they, uh, Shannon Speed provided us with really the history of how Abiyala Working Group came to be. And that has been a really important part of our work uh, this year and ongoing is to, what, to really continue to develop what is the, the, the work that we're doing um, that is really bridging within Native American and Indigenous studies um, that we're doing with the, through this uh, project of Abiyala. Yeah, thank you, Marcelo. And the third day was also <clears throat> connecting uh, more specifically to different areas of uh, Abia Yala that aren't traditionally represented. Um, so uh, Mexico, El Salvador, and Peru, <clears throat> and also uh, connecting with a Quechua relative who is part of the Water Protector Legal Collective of uh, Standing Rock. And, and also, you know, hosted by Iscaloteca uh, Tupac Enrique Acosta. And one of the things that, that came out of this gathering uh, was, you know, let's, let's organize the next steps. You know, now what? We shared about the, the conditions of water protecting from each of our areas and the very uh, sacred relationship that we have with water. Uh, with each other. And it was a very beautiful um, experience to exchange and to share with one another. And the question at the end was now what? What are those next steps of, of uh, actionable um, relationality and, and bringing together you know, all of these areas? How can we continue the work together? That was very inspiring. And as you can see in the next slide, also some of these testimonies. I'll read one of them from uh, Angelita Borbon, a UMA and community member. She says, Madre Tierra heard today's harmonious canto song. My heart sure did. And women's using tejidos, embroidery, <clears throat> to illustrate sacred science. I have watering eyes after the event. It's like I've been washed clean of the old and not needed, purified. Uh, I also certainly felt that way. And it was a beautiful gathering uh, to be able to, to see everything come, come full circle. And so um, as a working group, our, primor our priorities remain the vision and the project, the, uh, the prayer of Abya Yala, the concept from our Kuna relatives that seeks to amplify the ways in which we are related across settler borders. In this way, concerted outreach is still needed in order to continue connecting more directly with the thriving decolonial, intercultural, and indigenous-led social movements and knowledge producers that is happening throughout so-called Latin America. 
Although they are both colonial languages, translating all materials in English and Spanish helps create these connections, as well as working together to build relationships across our communities and territories. And we'd like to end with uh, introducing our new uh, co-coordinators who are present with us here today. Uh, Professor Emiliana Cruz Cruz, who uh, is a, a researcher at the Centro de Investigaciones y Estudios Superiores en Antropología Social in Mexico City, and Adam Kuhn, who is joining us from the University of Minnesota, Morris, and who specializes in contemporary Nahuatl literatures. Uh, thank you so very much again uh, for having us. Marcelo and I would be very happy to assist in any way that we can uh, for any emerging working groups. Uh, I know these certainly these regional gatherings uh, has been really great to to connect uh, with our specific regions and and hopefully we can move in the direction of of having uh, working groups across the the world so that we can stay in touch with the kind of work that is necessary. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in person next year and Plaza Kamati for the privilege of serving you this year and to all of the uh, outgoing officers and the new officers. Thank you so much. Uh, kia ora, Ponka and Marcelo um, for your wonderful work, um, for continuing that historical presence within NASA with your strong voice, but also with the, the gathering this year, which looks absolutely fantastic. And I was, I was glad to be able to participate in a little bit of it. Um, so thank you. Uh, I'd like to hand it to the prize committee um, and I'm just going to hand it to Aileen. This is a part of the, of the agenda where we, where we do announcements. Kia ora, Aileen. Um, uh, you are everyone. Um, the, when NASA actually began, one of the uh, main aims was to actually establish it as a scholarly association. And uh, under the leadership of Robert Warrior and the first uh, elected council, um, they decided that one of the ways in which we could recognise and honour the scholarship was to actually establish um, prizes and, uh, and the recognition of scholarly work over the years has been um, amazing in terms of the, the books that have won, the articles that have uh, been viewed. I think Chris Anderson's uh, piece on density and indigeneity was just a brilliant piece of scholarship. And this year, um, we were also... Um, totally impressed with the quality of the scholarship that, that, that came forward. But the prize committee, uh, it's hard work. Um, you have to find reviewers, you have to get copies of the books out. And in, a, in the pandemic, that has also been really difficult. And uh, in that regard, I want to uh, really thank Lewis uh, for his leadership uh, in ensuring that we all, uh, we all were on the same page. Um, and I think I'm going to hand that over to Lewis now to speak about uh, our process. Yes. Thank, um, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Aileen. Um, it's time for a celebration and recognition uh, for the important scholarly work uh, that has been reviewed and awarded through the NASA Prize uh, uh, they surprises uh, this year. Uh, works that constitute an affirmation of indigeneity as an intellectual force yeah. beyond settler borders at this time. Uh, I would like to thank all the authors who submitted their scholarly work for uh, this particular prize I'm going to present, which is the first first book, uh, best first book in Native American and Indigenous Studies in 2021. So the winner for best first book in Native American and Indigenous Studies in 2021 is a colleague, Jamaica Heolimelei Kalani Osorio for her book, Remembering Our Intimacies, Moelo, Aloha, Aina, and Ea. 
published by University of Minnesota Press in 2021. I would like to share with you the statement made by uh, the wonderful committee we had for this uh, prize, uh, colleagues uh, Chad Allen from University of Washington, colleague Jose Antonio Lucero from University of Washington, and Rene Watchman from Mac McMaster University. So uh, this is the statement from the committee. Based on the impressive submissions the committee received for the 2022, for the 2022 NASA First Book Award, we can say without hesitation that the discipline of indigenous studies is producing a remarkable number of thoughtful, rigorous, and theoretically innovative scholarly works. We congratulate all the authors for their contributions. The committee had a tough task, but after careful consideration and discussion, we are pleased to announce that the, 2020, the 2022 First Book Award goes to Jamaica Heolimelei Kalani Osorio for the book Remembering Our Intimacies, Moolelo, Aloha, Aina, and Ea. The committee was impressed by the poetic and political range of Osorio's work. In its close and intimate explorations of the archives of indigenous language and its activist mobilizations on behalf of the Mauna, Osorio illustrates the theoretical power and abundance of Kanaka Oiwi scholarship and language for providing new insights for indigenous queer theory and native feminisms. With the central metaphor of Upena, fishing net, this works makes a compelling case for holding, caring for, and restoring multiple forms of pilina, intimacy. Grounded, place-based, and in deep conversation with Kanaka or Iwi knowledge, Osorio's work should be read and engaged by all who are interested in the power of indigenous studies to articulate native histories, desires, and futures. That's the statement of the Best, best First Book Prize Committee uh, to recognize the work of Jamaica Helomile Kalani Osorio. Uh, I see that uh, colleague uh, Jamaica Heolimele Kalani Osorio is attending this event, so more reasons to congratulate uh, warmly uh, her for her uh, for this accomplishment. So that's the report from uh, on the that's the rep my report on the best first book uh, in Native American and Indigenous Studies in 2021. Now I would like to give the floor to our colleague Astri Dankertsen uh, from the Sabmi territory, member of the council and a faculty at uh, North University to recognize the best subsequent book in 2021. Thank you. Shaltumai. Thank you, Luis. Um, I would first like to thank all uh, the authors of the excellent books that we have received. Uh, and I think that uh, we received, I think we received uh, 20 nominees, uh, which we, um, yeah, we received 19 books in total. And we had a great time reading all the books and we had, could have made uh, maybe five or six winners because there were a lot of excellent um, books that we were able to read. Uh, but just to say a little bit about the way we worked, uh, we were a committee that uh, had uh, three members uh, from all around the world. So we had kind of a, uh, a it was a challenge to actually meet uh, kind of in person on Zoom because we were in quite different time zones. So we communicated a lot on email uh, and we read through all the books. And, and we were also, also decided early that we all should make a list of three of our favorites that we could send to the others. Uh, and when we did that, it was quite easy actually to, to find a winner. 
because we all agree that uh, this year's winner was one of the uh, our all our favorites. So all of the committee members could agree that this was one of our favorite books uh, this year. Um, can we maybe get a new slide? Thank you. And this year's winner uh, is uh, Joanne Barker, uh, Red Scare, the State's Indigenous Terrorists. Uh, and this was something that we, we, we agreed on, uh, as I said, uh, it was an excellent book and we really enjoyed reading it. It was so um, well structured. It has an important political uh, and scholarly, um, um, it, it's, it's an important contribution to the field in many ways. Uh, and we all agree that this was a book that we really enjoyed reading. Um, can I get the next slide maybe? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so to read uh, the statements of the statement of the committee, um, we state that uh, Joanne Barker's book, Red Scare, the State's Indigenous Terrorists, is a critical and innovative intervention into the ongoing history of the relationship between the US state and indigenous nations. To draw attention to the ways uh, indigenous people have been represented in racist ways as terrorists to justify the oppression of indigenous activism. To show how contemporary activism and fights for land and indigenous life are not new, but the latest, um, iteration of this fight by indigenous peoples, which has been fought urgently and consistently since first invasions. This text resonates with all three judges who think that Barker's book should be widely read and believe that it speaks not only to the relationship of indigenous and new estates, but to other uh, relationships between settler colonial states and indigenous nations. Its accessible style makes the book suitable for students, scholars, and lay people alike. Congratulations. So I now have the privilege of speaking about Nathan's 2021 most thought-provoking article, sorry, 2022. And uh, my name is Karen Reckley. And if we could move to the next slide. Thank you. So the prize committee for the most thought-provoking article was very pleased to receive 32 articles for consideration in 2022. We were impressed by the high quality of the articles and a diverse range of topics. This made our task hard, but extremely enjoyable. In making our decisions, the committee took into consideration the application of indigenous knowledges, the best new concept and evidence of an ethical citational practice. The committee chose both a winner and an honorable mention, and both have been chosen for their commitments towards indigenous futures, refusal of settler colonial infrastructures, and their depth in collaborative world making. The strength of our selection for most thought provoking article is situated in the author's thoughtful exploration of Osage values within the nation's governance mechanism. The clarity in this discussion provides inspiration and challenges for First Nations people to consider the proposition of moving to a new country as an approach to explicating the entanglements of colonialism. The authors have deftly and ethically uh, presented their logics through privileging Osage elders, leaders, and other First Nations scholars. We appreciate this work for the way that it amplified a relational ethics of care through collaborative practice, an intervention into the grammars and systems of order and possession. The practices denoted here are intentional, thoughtful, and carefully situated as organizing principles for their community. This elsewhere is a socially just and collective rendering of relations within the worlding processes of community. And so we'd like to congratulate Meredith Drent and Jean Dennison, moving to a new country again, the Osage Nation's search for order and unity through change.
congratulations. And if we can move to the next slide. So as mentioned, we did want to amplify all of the beautiful work from the submissions, but we did choose an honorable mention. So this was Skyu Lewis sensory access at silex blockages, um, blockades, fluid blockages, fluidities, and futures. The strength of our selection for the honorable mention within most thought-provoking article are the ways in which Lewis demonstrates the ways in which non-human and human relations are both embodied and embedded in landscapes and waterscapes. Lewis presents sensory approaches in celebrating First Nations resilience and resistance, the articulation of connection and responsibility to more than human relatives is explored through a strong theoretical analysis that enriches our approach to reading multimedia representations. This writing also incorporated indigenous feminist STS in a way that builds upon conversations within the field centering a decolonial approach to multi-species ethnography. Lewis brings into focus the strength of the relatedness between salmon people in the Silex Okanagan and other communities who are in connection to water from the mountains to the ocean. Salmon traverses indigenous waterscapes and oceans, and in doing so, they provide their human relatives with sensory experiences, memories, and connections to place. Thank you. I'd like to now um, turn the mic <laughs> to over to Aileen. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, on behalf of NASA, I'd like to thank the uh, everyone that was on the committees, Chad Allen, Renee Watchman, Antonio uh, Lucero, Daniel Heath Justice, Crystal McKinnon, and Gary uh, Thomas for the work that they put in. In particular, uh, I'd like to thank Lewis, Astry and Karen as the chairs of the three respective uh, committees for the time that they gave, the guidance that they gave and um, the way in which we worked relationally in coming to our decisions. Uh, so thank you all for a great job. Uh, kia ora, and I'd just like to echo those words of Aileen. Um, particularly thanks to the committee members who are non-council members who came on to do all that work. Um, congratulations to all the winners and thank you to all, all the other people, all the other uh, submitties too, um, but also to our prize committee. I know it's a lot of work. So to Louise, Aileen, Karen and Astrid, thank you so much for all that work that you've done for us um, this year. So it's now part of the, um, the meeting where we turn to the, the accomplishments of our membership, was a, which is a regular feature of, it, of what we do at NASA, basically kind of celebrating our membership. Um, and I'm going to turn it to our council member, Kiara Vigil, to, to lead this. Kia ora, Kiara. Uh, Brendan. So uh, Kiara Vigil, I'm a professor at Amherst College and I'm excited to get to recognize the highlights from many of our members. Not all, but those of you who completed the survey that we had attached to registration for this webinar. So Diana Chanupi, uh, let's let's try it. Let me uh, there.
Nothing like a little cool in the game to wrap us all up. So thank you all for your wonderful work this year. Brendan, it's over to you. Thank you, Kara, and yes, my congratulations. We certainly have a wonderful um, membership. So uh, as one of my last acts as president, I'm going to hand over to um, the incoming president, uh, Aileen Morton Robinson, for a few words. You're on mute, Aileen. Um, so I've got the, the job of actually thanking Brendan uh, for his presidency. Um, one can only say that last year and the year before have been extremely difficult years to navigate uh, for NASA. And uh, my sincere um, thanks to Brendan uh, and also to Susan uh, for making sure that um, NASA basically got its business done in, in both in, in different ways. So we had the first virtual meeting and then uh, the regional gatherings. And so as, as you know, the respective presidents, they really had some challenges in um, making sure that we could uh, achieve the goals um, of those, both those things um, in the years, um, given the difficulties that we all faced. Um, I want to particularly thank Brendan for his intellectual leadership and strategic insight. Um, he has ensured that Council's business uh, was seamless in application and his thoughtful and respectful chairing of uh, our monthly meetings uh, has always made it a pleasure to attend. Um, he has, of course, given service before this and, uh, and as has Susan. Um, and I think that we are truly blessed to have had them uh, as our presidents. Uh, I've got some big shoes to fill. Um, I probably won't be able to, uh, but I will try my very best as the incoming president. And so to Brendan and to Susan, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, Aileen, for those kind words. Um, it's, it's been a real honour to be the president of NASA. And um, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, look, I'm really mindful of time. We've gone over our time already, and we I'm mindful of the time of um, the esteemed tohunga that have um, graced us with their presence and their time today. It is time for Q&A, but I, I'm really hoping that it's, if there's some massive big questions that need to be discussed, that um, you can contact uh, NASA Council directly and we can and we can um, answer your questions. Um, I'm just really mindful of time, but I. But let's go ahead and, and have some Q and A. Marissa, how are we doing this? Uh, folks can just put questions into the Q and A um, box, uh, but there's so few people here, really, that if you put into chat too, I think I will catch it. Yeah, Denali says no questions, just accolades. <laughs> so look, I will take this opportunity to, to move us on um, because of, of time and, uh, and our guests that are here today. Uh, just before we go to the, to the closing, I just want to announce that uh, of the potentiality of NASA being hosted in Toronto in 2023, we actually haven't um, yet uh, attained a formal proposal and of course the processes that NASA Council will have to approve it um, but it's being led by our very own Sue Hill so we are really really confident that of course Sue is, um, will put together a great job so I'd just like to kind of tentatively announce that and I know this isn't probably the way to do things but unfortunately with the pandemic this is how we have to operate in the next little while. I do want to put a plug out for um, those people uh, who are considering hosting NASA 
to, you know, our time frame really should be about 18 months to two years. So if you're looking to host in 2025, for instance, um, you should be getting in a proposal to us uh, in 2023, etc. cetera. Um, thank you, everybody. And I would like to hand it now to, um, and I'm hopefully, uh, Tuhunga is still there. Te uh, Whare o Te Au Ki Te Tonga. Uh, we're going to do a couple of things here, uh, traditional things. First is a couple of uh, traditional incantations that they kind of lift the burden of this leadership that uh, Brendan has carried for his ten during his tenure as the president of NASA. But it's also probably applicable to all of you who are who are stepping down from your various roles uh, here. And then we're going to do two short haka, which is probably what one of the things that our people are uh, renowned for is doing haka. And they're both from the Bay of Plenty. So it's really about acknowledging uh, Brendan's uh, roots, his land, his waters, and his home. Unuhi o Unuhi o Unuhi o Ngo Kapa Ngo Kairu Ngo I Te Nei Tonga Tawhi O Mo Te A Unuhi o Unuhi o Unuhi o Ngo Hai Papa Kairu Ngo I Te Nei Tonga Tawhi O Mo He A Unuhi o Unuhi o Ngo Mahi Kairu Ngo I Te Nei Tonga Tawhi O Mo He A Unuhi o, unuhi o, ke ato i mai ko tūranga hā, ko a ko a tūranga hā, ne a ne a tūranga ku a tātā. O, peke tūranga keita e a koe hau nui e hau rā. Ko peke tūranga keita e a koe tai nui e tai rā. Ko peke tūranga kaita e a koe kukunu e a kukuroa. Ko peke tūranga pokaputa i ngā tini kaupapa ki te whai au ki te au mārapa. Whānō, whānō, aramu ai te toki, haumie, huie, tāinie. Te nei te wī, te nei te puna taurori, hurana te whare auen kui heri a ki reira, teihi te tapu te mana. Teihi keiru ngā whanatū wau ki runga ki te pū, ki te wānanga, ki te tauira, ka tū te tohi kura ko te ākinga o te meanui, ka tātū keiru ngi ā. Te nei te nini, te nei te nāna, ti nei a te hanga o te tupua. A whiti e a hāpaingia ko rangi nui e tū nei, ko papatu anu kuweta koto ake nei, ko tae mai tātou ki te mana ki tā tātou kaupapa, ki te whakawāte i tō tātou amo kapua ki tōna nō mahi, hei pānga nō mōna, mōna e noho mai ai ki roto i te tūmata nui o ngā iwi taketake o te ao. Hoki mai rā koe ki roto i tō iwi a ngā tipukenga, ngā tirangi nui ngā i te rangi, tauranga moana mo te manāke, 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 kore pītikia. Rā ingi a hō, tūturu a whiti whakamaua ki a tīnā, tīnā, uie, tā, uie, o te tāi uwe rā.
Concludes um, our, our business meeting for this year. Uh, Kete mihi nui kia koutou. Kia ora, ka kite.